open a really thoughtful Thursday on Sticky Thought Thursday. And we're going to talk about, or I'm going to talk to you about the art of being yourself. And I confess that this is a little bit of a repeat performance. The last time I talked about this was in 2016. And there were a lot of folks that found it really interesting. So back by popular demand, what are we talking about when we say the art of being yourself? Well, um, what I'd like to say to you is to think about this for a minute. Um, when was the last time you looked in a mirror? I gotta believe it was probably just a short while ago. And uh, what, do you, what do you look for when you look in that mirror? And what we're gonna talk about is the art of being yourself, not only when you look in the mirror, so uh, it, it really is kind of like a burning question. What do you look for when you look in the mirror? I mean, it's a burning question. And uh, do you look for reassurance? Do you look for a revelation? Or do you look for confidence? Um, I know when I look in the mirror, I look for all this hair I've lost, and I keep thinking I'm hoping it's going to come back. But, you know, that's just wishful thinking. And I look in the mirror, and I think, gee, I wish I was thinner. I wished I could get rid of those pandemic pounds just like that. I wish. Well, you know, we all wish. So it is kind of interesting when you think about it. What is your wish image and we all have them and we cross our fingers and we think oh if i look this time in the mirror i'm going to see something different and i hope when we're finished today that i've given you enough to think about that you're going to see things differently when you look in the mirror because uh this is kind of quite thought provoking. Now, I'd love to say that this is all mine, but frankly, it's not. And I want to introduce you to a gal named Carolyn McHugh. Now, she is Scottish, has quite a lilt to her voice. Uh, she's gotten brave enough to shave her head, which uh, kudos to her. I'm almost there, but not quite. She says, Chances are you've looked in that mirror uh, at least once today. And, you know, did you look, uh, you looked in it when you had a shave, uh, when you combed your hair, and perhaps to check out your teeth to make sure there's no spinach in it left over from lunch. And she says, you know, the interesting thing about looking in the mirror is that what you see in the mirror is not what everyone else sees when they look at you. So this is an interesting concept. And just to make sure that I'm right on the nickel here, I want to make sure that I repeat it the way it should be. She says, what you don't know is the face that's looking back at you isn't what everybody else sees. It's kind of reversed. It's distorted like a back to front image. Now, if you do anything um, as a Facebook Live, when you go to touch your face or you go to touch the screen, it's it's like it's not this way. It's actually that, whoop, that way. Uh, and it, it's really quite reversed. And she says this is exactly what happens when you look in a mirror. This phenomenon is known, is called a true mirror. And the mirror was actually invented by a brother and sister team in New York. And they are called John and Catherine Walters. And what they discovered, not the mirror, but the true mirror, what they discovered was that if you take two mirrors and you put them at right angles to each other, so I guess that would be kind of more like this. And then if you were able to take the seam out of the middle, 
that's what uh, the image bounces off each other. And that's what you see when you look into a true mirror. Now, I'm going to give you the link of Carolyn's TED Talk because um, she goes into quite an explanation about this. And it's really quite remarkable. So she said a true mirror is a, a, when you look at it, you don't look at yourself. You look for yourself. So I'm just going to say that again because I think it's really quite interesting. With a true mirror, you don't look at yourself. You look for yourself. Now, Carolyn is the CEO and founder of a company called Idology. And she's pioneered a movement dedicated to helping individuals and organizations to be fully deployed, original versions of themselves, and not pale with the limitations of others. So she goes on to explain that what life is really all about, our lives are really all about, is an hourglass. And she says what happens is when we are kids, we are our true self. Because kids stand up and they say, I'm the strongest one in the room. They stand up and say, I'm the smartest or I'm the most handsome or I'm the, the most best in, in running. But when they reach about the age of seven, they no longer point to themselves as being the best. They point to some other kid in the class. Well, they're the strongest, they're the smartest, they're the brightest, they're the prettiest, they're the whatever. But she said, when we're kids, we are the most honest and our most true self. And when we reach the wrinkly age, which I'm fast approaching, she said, that's when we're also our most honest because we've lived our life and we don't have time for the BS, quite frankly. So she said, but the time between the wrinklies and the kids is when we show up like a USB stick on the desktop of the world. We're trying to fit into other people's perceptions. We're trying to be the same. We're not standing in our difference. Now, a wonderful uh, book written by Sally Hogshead called Fascinate. She says different is so much better than being better. And I think too many of us try to fit in when really we should be standing out. So when we talk about all of this, we talk about the super kid and how they really believe in who they are. They believe in all of the magical things they can do. And when it comes to their wish image, they're living it. But when we kind of get into the middle of that hourglass of life, we're we're trying to kind of show up, as I say, like the USB stick on the desktop of the world. Now, when we put a bit of age on us, uh, we don't have the time to kind of mince words. And my favorite, my very favorite, is this gal named Iris Halfful. She lives in New York City. She's just recently turned a hundred years old. And she speaks her mind. Now this is something that I thought was kind of interesting and I wanted to share with you. These are Iris Apfel's words. I think it's better to be happy than well-dressed. And she's known for her style. She and her husband were interior designers for a number of years and he passed away a number of years ago. But she's going strong. She said, uh, what do you want to be when you grow up? And she said, I think about that a lot. First of all, you have to know yourself. And if you don't know yourself, you may as well forget it. 
because it takes a long time. And knowing yourself is not the easiest thing in the world. And it's often very painful. You have to look in the mirror. And that's the biggest faux pas because when people look in the mirror, they see someone else. So uh, really thoughtful, thoughtful words from Iris Apfel. Now, Carolyn goes on to say in her TED Talk that sometimes we're really called to be ourselves. And it happens when uh, there's a big change in our life. And that big change often happens uh, in the midst of a catastrophe, you, in a job loss, um, the death of a relationship, the death of a partner or a parent. Um, and, and most often we're called to deal with the catastrophe. But when we come out the other side, we're very changed. And she said, most of us, this is Carolyn McHugh, says most of us sleepwalk through life. And it's only these devastating events that move us. So she urges us to think about change when we aren't in a catastrophe, but when we're in the midst of kind of reassessing things. Because she said, frankly, that we only take up this we space. As I mentioned, she was Scottish. We only take up this we space between our toes. And um, again, it's all about showing up like that UBS, that UBS stick on the desktop of the world. And there is so much more. We're so much bigger that little USB stick. So what I urge you to do is think about so much more of who you are and bring a whole new approach to the subjects of gender and authenticity because this is the really the big essence of what Carolyn's talking about. She says we've got to swap our approval addiction because often when we look in that mirror it's about you know do i look okay will i be approved of um it, will i fit in and think about our authority and when we present our authority we also present a perception of who we want to be and I find this so fascinating that this all came through as I am preparing a five-day challenge, a free five-day challenge for anyone who wants to attend. And I hope there's a whole, whole bunch of you that do. And uh, we're going to talk about those perceptions. And we're going to talk about how do you want to show up. And I urge you to show up like you want to be seen. So I urge you to show up on your social media platforms, not like everybody else, not with the content that everyone else is putting up, but with how you want to be seen, how you want to be perceived. And think about, you could create this not in a catastrophe, not in the midst of chaos, but with your full faculties, and you can write your own story. And I'm going to show you how to do that because your social media is the first place that everyone goes to check you out. So what story are you telling? What kind of presence are you presenting? What kind of difference do you want to make? How do you want to fit in this world and take up more space than just that little place between your toes? So I challenge you to join me. Now, if you're curious, and I hope you are, 
put show me in the comments below and I'll make sure that you're on the list for when we launch this program in the next uh, kind of week or so. So five days to learn to show up like you want to be seen and create a big presence. Because I'll tell you, visual clues get more views. You interested in that? I hope so. I'm Darcy from Sticky Bee. And it's the place to be because I help you make it super simple to brand you. I help you get them sticky, get them stuck, and get them to stay like bees and to honey. In fact, I help you get noticed so that your customer, your audience, has a target to throw their wallet at. So I hope you join me. Now, if you're curious about uh, Carolyn's TED Talk, I'm going to put the link uh, in the captions as soon as, as uh, I close down here. And be sure to put show me in the comments below. And let's get you on board with show up like you want to be seen. It's a free five-day challenge. And frankly, what have you got to lose? Hope you got some ideas about this. Bye for now.